on to our next video that I want to show. This is a video from a podcast that I watched on TikTok. I didn't watch the full podcast. I just watched this clip, and it made me think of something very, very interesting. Posted it on my Instagram, but I think it's important to listen here on the podcast and talk about it. Asteroid mining is more feasible than seafloor mining. And the issue is that you're just not dealing with the environment at the yep. bottom of the ocean. I just can't emphasize this enough, how harsh it is. It's like the world is trying to destroy anything you take down there. It's freezing cold. It's corrosive salt water. It's under four to 5,000 or more pounds per square inch. Yeah. It's in a dust cloud operating rotating machinery. That's like, yeah. I can't think of a worse operating environment. Space here in a vacuum. Yeah, I see. It's pure. Right. You have solar power all around you. Right. So I think that there are different problems, but mm -hmm. I actually think, you know, sticking a nuclear rocket engine on an asteroid and over the period of 100 years, slowly nudging its orbit to end up in low Earth orbit, which is <laughs> orbital mechanics. I see. Wow, that's a different thought. No, okay. If you, if you can expand, you drive it. You if you, drive if it you to... can expand the time line, yeah. you can do almost anything. Because oh. then all you need to do is put an engine on an asteroid, and orbital mechanics will dictate, yes, you can eventually put that asteroid into low Earth orbit. And by then, we'll probably have very low cost access to low Earth orbit. And then now you got like a pure metal that you can just drop it using, using gravity. It's not fighting you. It's helping you drop it onto the Earth. Yeah. So I think asteroid mining is actually something that will happen. Very interesting. Very interesting. Kind of a something that I have touched on previously with um, the Osiris Rex mission. Uh, not not that particular place that they went to, Bennu, the particular asteroid they went to, but that continuation of that mission. They're going to another asteroid to potentially see what it's made of, and then we've talked about other asteroids and stuff where it's made of a lot of metals and stuff, and kind of played with the idea but this is a great video to kind of talk about the future of mining of getting these resources from the place around us now multiple issues multiple problems but there's a lot of pros and some of the pros he he talked about right there compared to if we were to go to the bottom of the ocean and try and get some of the mining right there, try and get it from the Earth's crust at the bottom of the ocean. Much, much more difficult to do that at this current state of technology than to go out to space. Now, like he said, the timeline, you have to stretch out the timeline. So it would take less time for us to go down to the bottom of the ocean and then uh, to to mine. Now, that doesn't make it easier. It just would take us a lot less time to get down to the source of where we're going to be mining to, as opposed to sending a rocket out to an asteroid, then using that very rocket to change the path of the asteroid and bring it back to Earth. But when you take the time and you stretch it out a little bit and you think okay maybe this is a mission that by the time my kids are here it'll be complete by that time and unfortunately until us humans start living 200 250 years this is probably going to have to be our solution because it is probably much cheaper and it's probably much easier to go to an asteroid now we're talking much in the future, we're not talking right now. But in the future, say 50 to 100 years, we should have the technology and the capability to fly to an asteroid. Even if we don't change the course of the asteroid, if we're not pushing the asteroid into low Earth orbit, we have, via the OSIRIS-REx mission, evidence of being able to take a fairly large sample. We took 250 grams of a sample of an asteroid tens of millions of miles away and then brought it back here to Earth. We did that in 2023. And that mission didn't start in 2023. That started a few years earlier because it's super far away and we had to travel all that way.
So when you account for the time that it will take to one, get to an asteroid to mine and then get back to earth, you think, okay, this is going to be difficult, which it is. However, the potential amount of stuff that you could mine from these asteroids is very, very significant. You kind of think just, okay, what could I get from an asteroid? I mean, if you get an asteroid that's majority, say, iron or majority copper or aluminum or something like that, titanium, whatever it may be, um, but you have a giant rock floating out in space, and like he said in the video, you don't have to worry about particularly the ocean or about atmospheric pressure. You're in a vacuum. You're pretty much just floating through. Your main worry is, I guess, the sun in terms of getting power to whatever machine you are operating. Um, the radiation, if you were to send out actual humans to try and harvest this, which I don't think is anywhere in the near future. I think they would just use robots to do so. Um, but uh, the potential radiation that could be coming from the sun. But other than that, it's just about getting there making sure that you're able to communicate with it, making sure that it's able to actively work and get all of the elements off of the asteroid and then take those and come back to Earth. Now, this is not impossible. It's just very difficult. And I think the upside is a little bit larger because if we take a, a look at the current mining operations around the world, um, and with the help of ChatGPT as well, I think we can kind of see that this is a legitimate possibility if we are thinking 5, 10, 15, 20 years in the future of a world in which we've mined a lot here on Earth and there's not many resources left. So this is a problem that is for future generations, but I think it's something to think about right now. Miners capitalize on energy transition commodities despite challenging road to net zero. PwC's 20th annual mine report. All right. London, 22nd, June 2023. Mining revenue held steady at $711 billion in 2022. So that's the revenue of the entire or the vast majority of the mine mining industry. All right. See, you can see another year rising costs and economic certainty squeezed uh, the margins from 32 to 29 percent. In its 20th edition, PwC's 2023 mine, the era of re reinvention, an annual review of the top 40 mining companies global examining trends in the mining industry. In this report, PwC found market capitalism of the top 40 miners tripled from $400 billion in, 20, in 2003 to $1.2 trillion in 2022. So these things are getting very valuable and getting very big. The findings of this year's report capture major themes and developments impacting the industry, especially the impact of energy transition, which will shape the industry over the coming two decades. So a shift to trying to be carbon neutral, trying to keep things green, trying to uh, fill all of these initiatives. Miners will also have to navigate the increasing role governments and the players like automobile companies are playing in the sectors while simultaneously ensuring that they are well positioned for the clean energy transition, which requires access to resources. And then it kind of goes on further. I'll, I'll link all this stuff in the, in the description, but uh, materials and minerals that they're going to be doing. Here's their decarbonization, all this stuff to help the planet, as they would say. Um, yeah, but basically you're looking at almost, this is strictly revenue, $711 billion generated by this thing. In the grand scheme of things, it is very important that we have these mining uh, 
industries because much of the technology that we use is using things such as titanium, aluminum, uh, and there are certain rare earth minerals that we are using to create computer chips, uh, chips for cars, chips for everything, microchips, computer chips, everything that you can think of. Some rare earth elements are being used in those, and those rare earth elements need to be mined. So this, this then leads back to, is there a potential to ultimately replace the on-earth mining, say, in, like I said, the timeline for me is 50 to 100 years, probably at the earliest when this could be considered a possibility. I don't think in 2030 they're going to start going to asteroids and mining those asteroids. I think we're talking decades in the future, if not 100 years. But I do think there is some good possibility to do so. So I went and I asked my trusty friend, ChatGPT, what it thought of the situation. So here was my prompt. Estimate the potential amount of money that could be generated if humans began to mine asteroids in space. And now here is the full response. Estimating the potential amount of money generated from asteroid mining is a complex task and depends on various factors, including technological advancements, the cost of space missions, the type and composition of asteroids, and the market demand for extracted resources. As of my knowledge update in January 2022, asteroid mining remains largely theoretical and no significant commercial operations have been established. Here are some key factors to consider when estimating the potential value of asteroid mining. One, resource composition. The value of asteroids lies in their composition, which can include precious metals like gold, platinum, rare earth minerals, and other valuable minerals. The specific composition of the target asteroids will greatly influence their economic potential. Number two, technological advancements. The development of cost-effective and efficient technologies for prospecting, mining, and transporting materials from asteroids is crucial. Advancements in robotics, automation, and space travel technologies will impact the feasibility and profitability of asteroid mining. 3. Market Demand The economic viability of asteroid mining depends on the demand for the extracted resources. If there is a growing demand for rare metals and minerals on Earth, the value of asteroid mining would increase. However, the market conditions and demand for these resources can fluctuate. Number four, space mission costs. The cost of launching and conducting space missions is a significant factor. The development and launch of spacecraft, mining equipment, and the transportation of mine materials back to Earth will incur substantial expenses. Advances in space travel technology and reduced launch cost could improve the economic feasibility of asteroid mining. Number five, legal and regulatory framework. The legal and regulatory environment governing space mining activities will play a crucial role. As of now, international agreements and legal frameworks regarding space mining are still in development, and clarity in these areas is essential for attracting investment and ensuring a stable business environment. Number six, the overall state, oh, global economic conditions. The overall state of the global economy will impact the investment climate for asteroid mining. Economic conditions, geopolitical stability, and other macroeconomic factors will influence investor confidence in long-term projects such as space mining. Six points right there. Now let's continue. Given the uncertainty surrounding these factors, it's challenging to provide a specific estimate. Some studies and experts have suggested that the value of certain asteroids could be in the trillions of dollars. But these estimates should be taken with caution. The development of asteroid mining as a viable industry will require significant investments, technological breakthroughs, and a favorable economic and regulatory environment. So kind of what ChatGPT is saying is there are many factors that go into this, uh, but in my opinion, 
this is not ChatGPT, his opinion, but my opinion, I think the upside is there. Uh, one, because if we're able to figure out a way to make space travel one simpler and cheaper, I think we should invest in that technology because ultimately what I hope for this planet is that in many generations after myself and my kids, that we are able to get off of this planet and go populate the areas around us to spread our species. Because I think, and also while doing that, spread good ideas. Not, and listen to what I'm, listen to what I'm saying, spread ideas such as love and fairness and kindness and all the good things that we have in our society. Not try and change different things but go to a planet treat it with the respect that it deserves try and not have any war any conflict but just try and live in peace and harmony and help people out when they need help and try and do the best but we are hundreds if not thousands of years away from that point in my mind now something that could get us there faster would a hundred percent be asteroid mining if our goal as just a singular planet and currently the only one that we know of that can even that even has a a little bit of evidence that there's life on I've talked about K218b obviously they found they found some stuff in the atmosphere, so it, it does indicate that there is life there, but that is not conclusive evidence, and there's more research that needs to be done. But that's a good start. That's a good start. But Earth is the only one where we're like, yeah, there's definitely life here. And I feel as though we have a responsibility to continue the life here on Earth and try and spread out and bring life to all areas of our solar system, then to our galaxy, and ultimately to the universe. And by doing so, spread the best aspects of this current society. But having asteroid mining as a part of that could really help jumpstart us because you can get um, a lot more materials, minerals, rocks, all this stuff from outside of the Earth than you can on the Earth, because there is a much larger array of asteroids and stuff that is out in the cosmos than is here on Earth. And if we ultimately, 100 years or so, run out of minerals and materials here on Earth, we want to be able to not have to, at that moment, come up with this technology. We want to already have that technology available to us and potentially already a couple of missions to asteroids to garner resources to ultimately mine those asteroids and bring those uh, minerals and materials back to Earth already before we run out of all the minerals, all of the natural resources here on our planet. So there is no major lapse in supply and demand. There are, the demand probably will continue to go up as we're having more and more people. Maybe we'll get up to 10 billion, 15 billion, 20 billion, 30, 40, and then it'll continue to grow. And now with the increase of people, you need more energy and you need more resources, more food, more water, more everything, basically, the more people that there are. So with that being said, the demand would increase and then our solution could be to get massive amounts of minerals and materials and resources from these asteroids bring them back to earth and distribute them amongst the people to help out our planet and uh obviously this kind of goes through the the major factors of it these six points right here um it and it's right chat gpt is right in saying that there are some major hurdles that have to be climbed over and have to be accomplished in order for this to even be a remote possibility. But one, I do think that within 500 years to 1,000 years, we could potentially run out of all 
natural resources on this planet. And I also think that within five to 500 to a thousand years, we could come up with a technology that is cheap enough and accessible enough for us to send missions to asteroids and take back large swaths of minerals, rocks, and materials, natural resources there. But that is dependent on what the state of our technology is, right? And that's something that with time is just hopefully going to get better. But global economic conditions and global economic or and global warfare conditions have a huge role to play in that. If everybody's broke, nobody has any money, the global economy crashes, we're not going to be thinking about mining asteroids. We're going to be thinking about how do we stop people from starving and rioting in the streets. And if it's warfare that is global, if there is a nuclear war that occurs between major countries and millions and millions and millions, if not hundreds of millions of people, entire countries of people are wiped out as a result of nuclear bombs, then, yeah, sorry, we're not going to be thinking about sending missions to asteroids. We're going to be thinking about, okay, uh, we just lost 80 million people in one day in, in the state of New York because we got 35 nuclear bombs that hit the entire state. Uh, what do we do? We're not going to be thinking about, all right, in 30, in 30, in 35 years and in, in 80 years, we're going to run into a shortage of this particular resource. So therefore we need to think of missions to go get those resources off the asteroids. That's not, it's not going to be what we're thinking about. So there is a many, many multitude of factors that need to go right in order for this to even be considered. Now, I'm hoping and I'm confident that us as humans are going to be able to get close to this, but knowing the, the history of this earth, it's going to take us a lot longer than we initially think. I think it might take 100, 150 years before we're sending missions to asteroids and mining. Um, but maybe it's 250, maybe it's 500, maybe it's a thousand years because of factors that I cannot predict. Major factors, like I just said, economic and warfare. Those are two things that could either accelerate this process if there's no war and the economy is great and people are looking for new ways to potentially grow the global economy. This would be a fantastic idea to do so. But I'm not very confident that we'll get that option as opposed to global warfare or global economic catastrophe. I'm leaning more towards th that second one rather than the first if I'm thinking about the history of this earth. Not that I think that the world's going to end or, or anything like that, but I think if we're talking about likelihood and chances of one of those two happening – I would choose the second option just based off the earth, based off what we're currently dealing with. But I don't know. My hope is that this planet can get its act together and hopefully that it can figure out ways for us to continue moving forward as we progress through our society.